With a smirk on their faces, my husband and mother-in-law pulled out a piece of paper. It contained absurd demands like leaving the house to my husband and not complaining later, all written with my mother's signature. She must have been deceived into signing it. This has no legal effect. It's outright fraud. No, I wrote this. She admitted so easily. We were thrown out of the house, along with a completed divorce form. My husband looked at me expectantly. Did he think I'd cling to him? I won't look back, ever. Just wait and see. Beside me, gritting my teeth, my mother said, We are happy. My name is Ava. I'm 53, part-time and a homemaker. Lately, my hands have been severely chapped. My husband is an office worker. We live with my parents in their home. We don't have any children. But I have a more serious worry than chapped hands. She might have dementia. It's almost certain, though not officially diagnosed yet. Her memory and judgment are weakening. She forgets a lot, even things she's forgotten she's forgotten. Sometimes she acts like a different person, doing absurd things. Some days are worse than others. She used to be diligent and perceptive. But since she injured her knee and stayed home, it's been gradually declining. Her knee has healed, but I don't want her going out alone out of concern. My father and I take turns caring for her. Since he is home when I'm at work during the day, we can handle anything that comes up. But I worry her symptoms might worsen, and my husband shows no willingness to help. We have to think about what we are going to do. Then my father fell ill and had to be hospitalized for a long time. I can't leave my mother alone, but I can't keep taking time off work either. When I discussed it with my husband, Aren't you worrying too much? As if it were someone else's problem. She might leave the stove on or get lost. That's exaggerated. What if something happens? You can't worry about every little thing. He's annoyed. Even if they're in-laws, isn't he too cold towards my mother, whom we've been living with for years? Besides, we're only living here because his income is too low. Shouldn't he feel grateful and want to reciprocate? Quit your job and take care of her. It's not as easy as he makes it sound. I don't want to quit my job even if it's part-time. I've been working at the same place for years. Can you support us with your income? I wanted to ask him. If you use caregiver services and help out, I think we can continue living as usual. Huh? Me? Only occasionally. She's your mother, isn't she? But. It's none of my business you'll have to handle it yourself. You can't talk like that. Even if her symptoms are severe enough to use caregiver services? We'll find out from the hospital. You're always complaining about your part-time job at the salon, how your hands get chapped, how standing all day is hard. Just quit already. He said, clicking his tongue before leaving. What the hell? That's awful. Sure, my hands get chapped, but I've never said I want to quit. It infuriates me to hear him speak ill of my beloved job. I knew this day would come eventually. It's not my problem, he says. That can't be right. We're family. Should I give him the same treatment if his mother ends up in the same situation? I'm so angry. But there's nothing I can do. I'm the flexible one, working part-time. And though I think it's still a long way off, if it comes to helping her change clothes or bathe, she'll probably resist. 
If I quit being a hairdresser at my age, I won't be able to return to the job. Trends and chemicals keep changing, and I can't keep up. Even though I have loyal clients. No, there are plenty of hairdressers, but I'm the only one who can care for my mother. There's no point in being depressed. I have to look forward to it. When my father gets out of the hospital, things will go back to normal. First, I'll take my mother to the hospital, have a proper discussion with my husband, arrange for caregiver services, and prepare for the future. I still don't want to quit my job. I should see if I can get some time off. A few days later, just as I had decided. My father's condition suddenly deteriorated, and he passed away. What a shock. There was no time to grieve for family members. Funeral preparations, along with various procedures, kept coming one after another. My mother was deeply saddened. Sometimes, she seemed absent-minded like a child, suddenly bursting into tears, unable to control her emotions. But once she put on her kimono, she straightened up as if by magic and carried out her duties as the chief mourner admirably. I, too, was vigilant in supporting her. And just like that, we bid farewell to my father in no time. Both mentally and physically exhausted, my mother and I finally began to feel the loneliness of his absence. He was a man of few words but kind-hearted. Even though we knew he wouldn't come back, there were still his armchair, teacup, reading glasses, and half-read paperback books. Neither my mother nor I felt inclined to tidy them up. At that moment, my husband returned with his parents. Come to think of it, he had said this morning that they were coming to help clean up the house. I appreciated their willingness to help, but I wasn't ready for that yet. I politely declined and suggested they have some tea before leaving. My mother seemed exhausted and was dozing off. I decided to let her rest. I showed my in-laws to the tatami room by the entrance and prepared tea. My husband started demanding, I want coffee, not tea, and get some sweets too. I thought, why don't you do it yourself? They're your parents, but there was no point in holding a grudge forever. I had decided to move forward positively. Let's hire a professional to dispose of the big items all at once. Yeah, right. They discussed such matters without consulting us. Um. We don't need to tidy up just yet. Why? She rolls her eyes. We'd like to wait until we're a little more settled. Huh. When I said that, she tilted her head and said, What are you talking about? That's inconvenient. I didn't understand why she was inconvenienced. I looked at my husband, but he avoided my gaze. Well, we've already given the house to our eldest son's family. The renovations are starting soon. What should we do? Well, I don't understand what you are saying. From today, my parents will live here with us. My husband suddenly declared. Wait, what are you talking about? It's already decided. Huh? This is my parents' house. I was confused, and my husband wouldn't meet my eyes. Ava, didn't you hear about it? Her casual tone added to my confusion. I thought I told you. Were you not listening? Maybe you forgot because of the funeral. He lied with a straight face. How could I have missed such an important conversation, even with all the hustle and bustle of the funeral? I don't understand, and I do not agree. Your consent isn't needed. It's already done. What do you mean? 
I've already. I felt a chill run down my spine. When did this happen? Did they take advantage of my mother's absent-mindedness to push this through unilaterally? That would be unforgivable. I was stunned. My mother-in-law turned to my husband and said, Hey, we can't take care of useless freeloaders who quit their jobs and need financial support. Can we? He nodded in agreement. Right, so you two need to leave as soon as possible. Her words were so shocking that I couldn't speak. Were my mother and I the useless freeloaders who quit their jobs and need financial support? What did she mean by telling us to leave? This is my parents' house. Cancel this. No way, Ava, you look scary. I haven't quit my job, and I'm not whining. And my mom is not a useless freeloader. It's all true. I can't lie because I have an honest personality, haha. <laughs> How could she say such cruel things with a laugh? I felt dizzy. It's impossible to cancel. You signed a document. He pulled out a piece of paper with ridiculous demands like leaving the house to my husband and not complaining later, all written down. And indeed, my mother's signature was on it. She must have been deceived into signing it. This has no validity. It's not a joke, it's a scam. What? You made my mom write it when she was demented, didn't you? It's invalid. What are you talking about? You said yourself earlier that you are not an old man. Then, my mother, who was supposed to be dozing off, showed up. Welcome, everyone. What brings you here today? She greeted us with a smile, completely unaware. My husband suddenly confronted her. Mother, is the signature here yours? Did you sign here? Yes, that's my handwriting. It's so unfair. If you understand, then pack your things and leave right now. How dare you? If you don't leave, I'll call the police for trespassing. This is absurd. Without understanding anything, we were forced out of the house, stuffing valuables and personal belongings into our suitcases. They even handed me a pre-filled divorce form, saying, Submit this. He looked at me with a smug, expectant gaze. Does he think I'll cling to him? I clenched my teeth and avoided eye contact. As I stepped out of the doorway, I desperately grabbed one memento of my father's, the leather shoes he cherished and polished. Although they were men's shoes and not very useful, it was better than having no keepsakes. My mother and I got into the car and drove aimlessly, consumed by anger towards my husband and in-laws, along with a sense of loss and anxiety. Overwhelmed by despair, we wondered what to do next. I couldn't muster any positivity. Tears welled up. At that moment, my usually quiet mother muttered. How fortunate. Despite losing my father and being kicked out of our family home, she said the opposite of what I felt. Is she senile? Mixed emotions resembling anger surged within me, but before I could say anything, she began speaking. We're free now. It's a relief that unnecessary things have parted ways on their own. No regrets, right? I have regrets about leaving our family home. I replied with frustration, and she laughed. That old, big house was falling apart. I wonder what they liked about it. It's such a hassle to maintain, but lucky them, they can leave it all to someone else. She said in an overly positive tone. It's too much positivity. Even though I wish dad were still alive. I exclaimed. What are you saying? 
it's better this way. I don't want your father to suffer. What about the furniture and appliances you just bought and liked? Aren't you sad to leave them behind? We can buy new ones. It's exciting. You're not upset about being called a senile old person? It happens to everyone. She said casually. Despite losing everything in one fell swoop, she remained nonchalant. I felt irritated and thought spitefully that she'd probably forget what she said now too. I'd be happy if you were with me. If you weren't here, I might have followed your father. Mom. It's okay, it's okay. She said, drifting off to sleep again. She's just like a child. That's right. If she forgets, as long as I remember, it's enough. Although I haven't fully recovered, I feel like everything will be okay as long as I'm with her. Soon after that, my husband contacted me. If you insist, I can forgive you. You can put your mother-in-law in an institution. You can put your mother-in-law in an institution. Huh? Can I forgive her? Did I do something wrong? I could see that she was thinking of using me as a housekeeper. I didn't want to have any more conversation, so I just said no and hung up the phone. My head was clearer than before. I guess I didn't need a husband. I had barely taken anything of my father's with me. Mother said memories were enough, so I had given up, but if there's anything left, I want to keep it close. I entrusted her to a neighbor and headed back to my parents' house for the first time in a while. At that moment, I had forgotten how much of a scoundrel my ex-husband was and felt gratitude instead. I told my workplace what happened and decided to start my own business as a hairdresser. I used some of my savings as a down payment and bought a second-hand house in the next town over. It used to be a house and a beauty parlor. The owner of my part-time job was very kind and gave it to me at a very reasonable price. Here, I could work from home with my mother by my side. The owner also helped me with the tools to open the store and remodel the store. Ava has always been there for me. His kindness sinks into my tired heart. I used up all my savings preparing for the opening, but I had no regrets. My husband was against it, so I had given up until now, but it has always been my dream to own my hair salon. I don't know if it will work out. I have not lost my anger toward my husband and in-laws. However I was able to cover up these feelings with my busy schedule, and the excitement of starting something new was greater. I was more excited about starting something new. I'm not looking back now. I have opened my hair salon, which I have longed for. My mother helps me with cleaning and laundry. In my spare time, I enjoy gardening. Chatting with my neighbors has become a daily routine. I am grateful that they advertise my store. I think I spend much less time sitting idle. When I was finally getting into a rhythm of life with my mother, my ex-husband contacted me. Why haven't you contacted me? Huh? I told you I forgive you. Come back home for once. What are you talking about? You're in trouble, don't be so stubborn. My ex-husband said with a snicker. I nodded my head. In trouble? Who is? Where did he come up with that? I heard you open a store. An old hairdresser like you alone. Poor old man. I've been a hairdresser for many years and I have a clientele, and the store is in a residential area. Many people come to the store after taking a walk. Please don't imagine that I am selfish. 
I make a lot more money than I did when I was working part-time. If you have no use for me, I'll hang up. Wait a minute. What is it? Well, I need you to come over to my house so I can return your father's belongings. What do you mean? My father's things that I could hardly take out. My mother had given up on them because she said she only wanted the memories, but if they were still there, I wanted to keep them. I had given up on it because she said that it was just a memory. Leaving her in the hands of a neighbor friend, I headed to my parents' house for the first time in a while. At this time, I forgot how much of a scum my ex-husband was, and was even grateful for him. My parents' house was an odd sight from the entrance. Unnecessary cardboard boxes were piled up, and mud stains and dead leaves that had flown in were still there. I wondered if they hadn't cleaned up, and as I watched, my ex-husband came out of the house. Hey, long time no see. I'm in a hurry. Can you give it to me as soon as possible? It's in the house, come in. The parents' house was so dirty that I hesitated to take off my shoes and go up there. It's a mess, isn't it? My mom can't clean. The house until now. The oldest son's wife used to do it. He complains, but if that's the case, why doesn't he clean the house himself? He is as selfish as ever. But it has nothing to do with me. I have no more regrets about a house that has been trampled on by others. It seems that my ex-husband is using the former living room as his sleeping place. Of course, it is a perennial floor, littered with trash from candy and juice, and smells filthy. I don't even want to breathe. It's filthy. I muttered to myself, and he said, Right? So come clean it up. Suddenly he says something unintelligible. Damn if you had bowed out earlier, it wouldn't be this dirty. Huh? I'll give you ten dollars an hour. Wouldn't it be great to get paid just to clean? His goofy face, which I hated. Oh well, in his mind, I was set up to need money. It seemed that denying it wouldn't do me any good, so I decided to finish my business and go home. I don't want to. Just get on with it and hand over my dad's belongings. Oh, well, I guess mom threw it away by mistake. I knew it. I didn't think it might be a lie, but I took a gamble. And I was betrayed after all. I was disappointed. But now I have made up my mind. I have no more use for this house or my ex-husband. He stands in front of me as I try to leave. How annoying. Please get out of my way. Wait, all right, don't sulk. You can come home alone. What? God damn it, you should have just come clean with me, man. You should have just been honest with me. This is your last chance. I don't understand. What's wrong with you? If you want a housekeeper, find someone else. Hey, don't get carried away. What can a part-time woman do on her own? He underestimated me. Don't be silly, he's forgotten. The only reason I've ever worked part-time is because he didn't want to. Because my salary would be more. I've been supporting you so that you could just do his job, and now you call me part-time and a woman. He looks down on me and thinks I'm a big jerk. Get out of my way. What? Get out of my way. You're worthless with a low salary. What? What? Ask your favorite mom to clean up. 
I slipped past the stunned him and left my parents' house. Ah, I felt refreshed. Seeing my parents' house transformed, I lost all attachment to it. I was disappointed that my father's belongings were missing, but it was better than having them dangled over my head forever. The look on his face as he rolled his eyes was a masterpiece. Let's go home soon, my mother is waiting for me. Sometime later, the owner of the hair salon where I used to work offered me a new job. It's a home visit hair service. This is a service that travels to the hair salon for customers who need nursing care and cannot come to the salon. The service is registered with the government office, and if there is a request from a client in the neighborhood, the service goes to their home. In some cases, it may be a nursing home. Some beauticians even make it their main job. I have a fixed clientele at my store, so if I were to take on a client, it would be once a week. However, I have a mother I don't want to leave alone. Even though I've been doing well lately, I don't want to go out all over the place. Sounds interesting. Please take me with you as your assistant. She said to me, as I was struggling with this. I had assumed that an assistant was a young apprentice hairdresser, but this was an eye-opener for me. I was blindsided. Yes, I should take her with us and walk her out. The doctor at the hospital had said so too. The best way to prevent dementia is to be actively involved in society and live a vibrant life. Let's not worry too much, let's try it first. I decided to take on several jobs a week. She is a very capable assistant, helping me clean up and talking to the clients while I am working at the site. She moves quickly and is very aware, just like she used to be. She is no longer idle. Then one day, my ex-husband showed up at the store. What are you doing here? I guess if he is in business, his whereabouts will inevitably be identified, but that doesn't mean he's going to come out here and harass me. How long are you going to bother me? I hid behind my back to protect my mother and clutched my phone ready to punch in 911. Um, well, I think I'll ask for a shampoo and a cut. Don't be silly. What do you want? I got an eviction notice from the real estate agent. What? You're the one who sold the land and the house, right? I don't remember that at all. What are you talking about? They think it's an uninhabited garbage house, and they've brought in a cleanup crew. You've got to be kidding me. Well, it's my mother. She sold the family home. I mean, didn't she say something about having finished changing the name of the house? No, no. The only thing she signed was that fraudulent document. Did he think that one handmade piece of paper was all it took? I knew that she was a person who couldn't do anything, but I didn't expect her to go this far. I was too stunned to say anything. Give it back. It's my house. I don't know. You're going to leave my aging parents homeless. What do you say? You took the house away from my mother. I don't care. Then I'll just take the house. With a private salon and a housekeeper. Great. He opens the door of the house connected to the store. You can't come in here. Just as I was about to call the police. What? He was breathing hard and suddenly became quiet. What is this? Pointing to my father's heirloom leather shoes that were left at the entrance. You already have a new man? He says in a trembling voice. I had put them away in a box, but for some reason, I suddenly felt like polishing them this morning. He didn't realize that it belonged to my father. 
I guess it's no wonder. He wouldn't notice if I cut my hair 20 centimeters off and can't remember anything about other people's shoes. I was sure he wouldn't remember that. He said, Oh, it's cheating. While I was there. What? Especially, we are already divorced. Who the hell are you? I won't forgive you. He gets angry with a red face. What do you mean you won't forgive me? Who do you think you are? I gloated in my heart. I could scare such a selfish person a little, couldn't I? Are you ready for this? What? Are you prepared to deal with them? I'm asking. If you saw those expensive shoes, you'd know. I'm sure you'll get hurt if you're not prepared. I stare at his face. He is in a cold sweat, his eyes are swimming, and he can't seem to hide his agitation. There was no way my ex-husband, a petty man with a lot of pride, could be prepared for such a situation. You are silent, but what's wrong? Can I call already? My ex-husband said. What? Do you want me to call him? What? Are you there? Honey. Come here for a minute. I gonna go. He runs away like the wind. Mother puts both hands over her mouth and stifles a laugh. Ha ha ha. Did you see that? How fast he ran away. I am relieved and relaxed. She can't stop laughing. Ah ha ha ha. Hey, who did you call? You are a good actor. I laugh, too. My ex-husband will never come here again. Thanks for saving me, Dad. The sale of my parents' house was, of course, my mother's doing. How could I possibly let you change the name of the house? Did you know everything? Of course. Of course. It has no effect when you put my name on a piece of paper like that. I knew it from the beginning. I was going to do it this way from the beginning, but I thought I would not be able to go through with the procedure if I was blurry. I was just waiting to see how things would go. She says matter-of-factly. I was surprised that she was aware that she was a blur. Lately, my head has been clear. It's as if the fog has lifted. So I'm sure it's getting better. I may be forgetting things, but I haven't been this way for a long time. I may be forgetting things, but it's always been like this. But I can't believe you gave up your precious family home so easily. Oh, my. Your father had said that we should sell the house. He said that you and your husband would eventually move out and we would sell the house and move to a convenient apartment in front of the station. Is that so? Life doesn't always go the way you think it will. Don't you think so? Indeed. Looking back, the symptoms of dementia began to appear in her when she started staying at home. She is an active person by nature so it is probably more to her liking to interact with others and exercise her mind and body in this way. I still need her to stay healthy. I have to earn enough money for myself as an assistant. I wonder if she will be okay for a while longer. Incidentally, my ex-husband and in-laws tried to return to the house they originally lived in, but their eldest son and his wife rejected them. They refused his mother who is not good at cleaning and has a bad character, as well as my brother-in-law, who is filthy and selfish. I guess they would never accept her eldest son who is filthy and selfish. By the way, the house is already in the eldest son's name, so they can't touch it. My ex and his mother have a very bad relationship because of the blame they put on each other. 
My ex was told that he had no place to live because of you and that he should take responsibility. He had no choice but to take out an unreasonable loan to buy a second-hand house. But knowing his savings and income, he was reckless. Knowing his savings and income, I think he is reckless. It seems we will have to live frugally to pay off the loan. It seems that the place we moved to has already turned into a dump. They piled up garbage bags on the street in front of the house right after they moved in, and the head of the neighborhood association, who was a tough guy, got angry with them, and the neighbors are also donkeys. Come on, please clean it up too. I don't care what you do because I have nothing to do with it, but please don't bother other people. That's right. His parents are still going strong, so they should work to help their thin-skinned son. If you don't want them to get mad at you, you have to do it, even clean the house. It's surely good for preventing dementia. What did you think of this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Can you help with the housework? Work at the office and home? Despite being able to live thanks to me. What? Able to live? What era are you from? I'm grateful to my husband, but I work all day doing housework and caregiving too. And yet. Are you talking back? Write up divorce papers and get out. I understand this is a threat. He thinks I won't leave him and abandon my mother-in-law. I've had enough. Everything I've built up has lost its balance and collapsed. To him, I'm nothing but a free maid. I refuse to spend the rest of my life taking care of such a man. My name is Alice. I am 52 years old. My only daughter got married and moved far away. And now I live with my husband and my mobility-impaired mother-in-law, just the three of us. As he ages, he's become increasingly arrogant lately. He bosses me around like a maid, telling me what to do. My mother-in-law has almost lost the use of one leg due to the after-effects of a stroke, and she needs assistance. Right now, I help her with bathing and using the toilet, but it's going to get harder and harder. It's not that I'm fed up, but I sigh sometimes. When will I ever have time for myself? Alice? Oh. What is it? Can I ask you something? She said with a sorry look. She was having trouble getting up the steps at the entrance. With a cane, she can move around inside the house, but the steps are dangerous. I don't want her to strain herself. Of course, one, two, three. Thank you, I'm sorry. No problem. Before her mobility became limited, she was a hard worker, bustling around from morning till night. She's dependable and caring. She taught me everything about housework. Even though I'm slow and clumsy, she patiently taught me without a single complaint. So, it's not so much about repaying her, but it's only natural to want to help her when she's in trouble. However, last night I had to accompany her to the bathroom three times. Being in the throes of menopause, I sometimes have trouble sleeping, and once I'm awake, it's hard to fall asleep again, so I sometimes feel tired. When I casually mentioned it to my husband, he just responded with an indifferent O oh and said, Is that about your mother again? Don't you have anything else? If I talk about something, will it make things better? Then I'll do that. I was astonished. That's not the point. Right, I want to install handrails at the entrance and in the bathroom for her. Huh? No need for that. If you're there, it's unnecessary. But. It costs money and it's in the way. Doesn't he realize that he might need it himself someday? Seeing my dissatisfaction, he said, 
if it's so difficult, why don't you ask a professional caregiver for help? He's missing the point. I'm not complaining. Besides, we haven't received certification for caregiving yet. Then get it. Don't say it so easily. Besides, I can manage daily activities on my own for now. Well, that's fine then. That's not the point. He didn't used to be like this. Now, he's become so self-centered that there's no way he'd suddenly become considerate. There's no point in hoping. Doesn't he feel sorry for his parents when they're inconvenienced or in trouble? Before being a son, he should think about being a decent human being. Three days later. What I feared has happened. My mother-in-law tripped and fell. She twisted her wrist while trying to break the fall, and now she's having trouble with everyday tasks. She can't change clothes or eat properly, so I'm taking care of her full-time. Even though I'm now tied up for more than twice the time as before, he doesn't lift a finger to help. He ignores the unwashed dishes and the pile of laundry. Even if it's just until her hand heals, I want him to help. But he has always taken a hands-off approach to household matters. Not just housework, but childcare too. He had no interest in our children's school events and, when I was sick, instead of taking care of me, he'd say things like don't give it to me and stay away. That's why he probably thinks he has nothing to do with caregiving for his parents. But if I collapse from exhaustion, he'll be in trouble too. I can imagine a house falling into disarray because of neglected chores. My mother-in-law would feel responsible and sad. Even if we get through this time, there might be something like this again. No, it's better to expect it. Neither she nor we will get any younger. For our future, we have to help each other and live together. So, I'd like you to help with the housework. I'm not asking you to suddenly start cooking meals, but maybe folding laundry or cleaning the bathroom. Huh? How about taking out the trash while you're out for a walk, then? Even though it should be something he notices and does on his own, why do I have to bring it up so clumsily? Despite thinking that, I asked with a smile. At this point, even making breakfast for yourself, like preparing bread and coffee, would be fine. Just do what you can, little by little. I felt sad saying it. It felt like I was talking to a child. Well, if this reduces my burden even a little, then it's a win. He looked dissatisfied. What's bothering him so much? What more can I say to make him understand? Just as I was thinking that, he said something unbelievable. Are you kidding me? Huh? I'm not kidding. Don't you understand the situation? You're asking me, the one who earns money for us, to help with housework? You're a housewife, yet you're being selfish. Selfish? That's outrageous. Were you even listening? He dramatically put his head in his hands and sighed deeply. You want me to work both at the office and home? I didn't say it like that. You're like a demon wife, despite being able to live thanks to me. His harsh words made her feel frustrated. To think he sees the position of a housewife as inferior, what era does he think he's living in? I appreciate that you work. But I work all day too. Huh. You're so full of yourself. Do you think there's any value in the housework and caregiving you do? I do. Because I do those things, you're able to go to work, right? Husband. Haha. Anyone can do that, right? If you were a professional, maybe, but you're just an amateur. Huh? If you're still going to talk back, then write up divorce papers and get out. I couldn't find the words. Even though I was angry, 
Some things should and shouldn't be said. Seeing I was shocked, the husband smirked. It seemed like he didn't mean it seriously. He's just threatening the housewife. And he knows I would never abandon my mother-in-law. Anger began to boil up. Fine, understood, I'll do as you wish. Something inside me broke. Everything I had built up lost its balance and collapsed. It seems I've reached my limit. I want a divorce. What? I'll be returning to my parents' house. What did you say? Hey, I won't allow it, apologize first. He shouted angrily, but I calmly replied. There's no need to apologize, right? You told me to leave. Are you going to abandon your mother? Why don't you ask a professional instead of an amateur like me? Isn't that what you said? You may be free, but professionals cost money, you know. As I suspected, to him, I'm just a free housekeeper. My feelings were rapidly fading. You can do it. After all, it's something anyone can do, right? No. I mean, well. You have no compassion, no gratitude. Who do you think you are? Stop being so arrogant. Huh? What's gotten into you? Don't say such things to me. He asked with a puzzled look, but she didn't respond. I won't spend the rest of my life taking care of such a man. I packed my things and left the house. It's a two-hour drive to my parents' house. As I started driving, I soon calmed down and began to worry about my mother-in-law. Will she be okay without me? Will she try to do too much with her immobile legs? She had planned to give me a dedicated cell phone to stay in touch directly. But my husband said, It's a waste of money. What a stingy man. He might not abandon his parents, but if something were to happen, he'd regret it. However, if I was to return home half-heartedly, I would only repeat the same mistakes. After being together for so many years, he thinks she'll come back soon because he knows my personality. I could picture his triumphant face. It's frustrating, it makes me angry. I parked the car at a convenience store and was pondering what to do when my phone rang. Hello? It was a call from someone I see every day. The content of the conversation was surprising, but I didn't need time to think. I understand, I'll be there soon, please wait. There's no need to agonize anymore. Well, shall we make him regret it greatly? A few hours later. I put on my favorite apron and started cooking in the familiar kitchen as usual. In the living room, my mother-in-law was watching the evening news as usual. My husband, coming out of his room, noticed me and shouted. Hey, what are you doing? What does it look like? I'm cooking. I'm making dinner for your mom. I replied calmly. Huh. So, you're back after all. Just a few hours of leaving the house, huh? Have you repented? Did you miss me? I continued cooking silently. Since we're divorced, you're a stranger now. It would be appropriate for you to bow down to me before coming back. Frustrated by my lack of response, he grabbed my shoulder and asked. Are you even listening? I replied sarcastically. If you lay hands on a stranger, it's assault. You know? Then you're trespassing. I'm working. Working? Yes, I've been asked by her to come and do household and caregiving work. Huh? What do you mean, Mom? She spoke up. I called Alice and asked her to help. Why are you doing things on your own? She's already a stranger. What are you talking about? You were all shaken up when she left. Wait, what? 
he stammered with a red face. She smirked. Since I asked someone else to take care of the house, we need to pay them properly. Huh? P pay? Why is he so surprised? It's his fault. After I left the house earlier, he said, I won't pamper you. You should consider it as rehabilitation. Otherwise, you'll end up bedridden. A declaration of doing nothing for her. As expected, there's no way he'd hire a professional caregiver. And to top it off. I'm tired. And he locked himself in his room. She quickly decided to give up on him. A wise decision. She called me and said. I don't want to meddle in marital issues and I won't oppose the divorce. She calmly spoke without blaming me for leaving. But I'm upset with his arrogant attitude and lack of effort. Well. Alice, would you help me? With what? I'm thinking of giving her a taste of her own medicine. Meaning you want him to reflect. Right? Exactly. Let's make him reflect. She had become quiet since her leg injury and seemed lively for the first time in a while. Maybe she had been storing up energy. You've been patient with his complaints for so long. Aren't you also fed up? Indeed, I am. Isn't it never too late to leave after getting back at him? And so, I was asked to take on household and caregiving tasks as a job. For as long as she desires. The payment is all of her savings. He trembled with fear. You're kidding. This is extortion. Oh, oh, it's the amount I suggested. And she said, nodding. I nodded in agreement. Mom, she's a coward who left without a word. Huh? Who is he talking about? Is he talking about himself? I absolutely won't pay her. Well, since I have no job, I'm leaving. She hurriedly tried to stop him. That's a problem. Then who will do it for us? He'll do it. It's pathetic that he can't even say that. Of course, what can he do in this house? Eat the meals prepared for him, bathe in the prepared bath, lie down, and complain. Is there anything else? She glared at him. Regardless of what you say, I'll have Alice take care of me. Since I've already handed over my savings as payment, she's free to use them as she pleases. That's great. First, Let's buy a cell phone for her and install handrails throughout the house. I also want a caregiving bed that she's been longing for. No, 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 that's my money. He said firmly. She frowned. What did you say? Say it again. Don't waste my money, even if it'll cost me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. She seemed speechless with amazement. What's with that look? I'm just telling the truth. Is her savings his own? It's ridiculous to hear him speak like a king. Whose house does he think this is? It's your parents' house. Despite abandoning the care of his mother, he says, My money? My money is being wasted, you say. She spoke in a low voice I had never heard before. I understand now. I've been patient because I didn't want to become a nagging old woman, but I've made up my mind. I'll say what I want to say clearly. Huh? Mom? This useless person. Huh? You're nothing but arrogant. You don't appreciate your family and think you can get everything your way. It's embarrassing to be yelled at by his mom at this age and be in a panic. Since when did you become such a person? Calm down, mom. I haven't changed. You may have long since forgotten, 
but I haven't. What? When I was in trouble with his abusive dad, didn't you always protect and help me? I was happy, thinking that was the real you. Or was that just an act for inheritance? My father-in-law, who passed away 10 years ago, was an awful tyrant. He was stubborn and selfish. My husband says he doesn't even know how many times he was unreasonably slapped. When he was young, he even used violence against his mom and caused chaos inside the house. It's chilling to imagine being in a position to clean up after that. Since I got married, I've been insulted countless times with words like slowpoke and good for nothing. Despite hating his mom, he always stood up for us. He was kind back then. His dad was even stingier than him and declared that his dad would take his wealth to the grave. I thought it was a joke, but his dad left behind a will that sounded more like a slander, saying, I won't give a single penny to my son because I don't like his defiant attitude. My husband, infuriated by having his pride as the eldest son and his patience trampled upon, of course, had the right to claim his legal share of the inheritance. However, it seemed odd to demand it from his mom in the same household. So, I comforted him by saying, you're the one inheriting assets under your mother's name. It doesn't have to be now. That seemed to settle it at the time. I never expected him, who despised his dad, to take on his role. I thought he just wanted authority as the head of the household for a while, but he seemed to have settled into the role comfortably. Or perhaps, as they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I know you're a kind son. Are you really satisfied with losing Alice, leaving me bedridden? Seeing her distressed face, he looked shaken and sought help from me with his eyes, but I remained firm. Now is the chance for him to change his ways. Mom, please forgive me. She quietly nodded. I'm glad. You truly are a kind son, unlike your father. Then she glanced briefly at me. Uh, um, Alice, I'm sorry. I was surprised by his sincere apology. Does she have some sort of mind control power? It was shocking to hear about divorce. You shouldn't say such things when you think about your family. I regret it. I'm glad you came back. Don't say it again. Okay. I thought if anyone were to say it, it would be me, but I decided not to say it. He later made promises to us. He agreed to take on some household chores and actively participate in caring for her. Despite his discontent, I did get him to commit to it. If you break your promise, you'll have to leave. Huh? I leave? Yes, and I won't give you a thing when that happens. Got it, I'll keep my promise. He seemed genuinely repentant as his mom scolded him, returning to his old self. While I was relieved that he seemed to have returned to his senses, it didn't last long. Well, it's not a big deal if I get the inheritance. He muttered softly. I didn't miss that. Perhaps he couldn't change so quickly. Well, for now, it's okay. He doesn't know. He probably won't know for years to come. I'll pretend to be surprised when he finds out the truth. And then, I'll enjoy his genuine repentance. I'm looking forward to it. Since she protected and kept hidden her savings, which I received as compensation, his expected inheritance won't materialize. We'll have to live modestly. Now that we've made a promise, I want him to put effort into helping the family. He said it's something anyone can do, he'll probably master household chores and caregiving soon. Learning new things when he's older is tough, especially if it's something he's never been interested in before. But he wasn't useless. 
he just tended to make extra messes. He broke dishes, spilled shampoo refills, and made countless small mistakes. The other day, he sparked the microwave and sulked because he was scared to use it anymore. What a nuisance. Finally, he admitted he lacked talent and offered to resign. Hearing that, I said, Hmm. Your father also wasn't one to keep promises. Uh, don't compare me to him. Bringing up his father makes him easier to manage. It's also tough for the teacher. You need to learn quickly or it'll be a problem. Uh, all right, I get it. Don't think he can get away with it. It's pathetic to give up after just a few days. How many years does he think I've been doing this? Keep trying harder. We renovated our home, installing handrails and refurbishing the floors to eliminate steps and ensure wheelchair access. My mother-in-law, use it meaningfully. So we paid for it with the compensation she gave me. My husband initially objected, but he finally understood the importance of making caregiving easier. Having handrails makes caregiving easier too, he realized. Should we also renovate the bathroom? And wouldn't an electric bed be convenient? In that case, I'll make him pay for the next one. He probably won't complain anymore. Now, he suddenly wants to cancel the divorce. That's a problem. Because I haven't even filed for divorce. We can't cancel something that hasn't happened. And neither of us has even written anything. I thought it was obvious that the divorce hadn't happened, but... It seems my leaving caused him some memory confusion. To him, my current position is like a live-in employee. But I won't tell him. It's more convenient that way. If I return to the position of a wife, he might treat me harshly. And if he treats me like a maid or property again, I won't forgive him this time. I still don't fully trust him. Besides, if we were divorced, wouldn't it be a problem if something happened? I'm not giving up my responsibilities and rights. I won't abandon my family. For now, he is like an apprentice. He's still learning household chores and caregiving. I'm the boss. He functions better when I handle things. It'll be a while, but I'll tell him when he acknowledges me. It depends on his efforts. How did you like this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Well then, let's meet again in the next video.